Greetings, Kindred. Happy New Year to you all. And um, I just feel this year is going to be a little bit more uplifting. And that's probably more on a personal, individual level. I think, um, you know, there's still going to be a lot of chaos around, but I could feel a lot of people coming back to themselves. And um, yeah, New Year's Eve, wow. The amount of fireworks that was going off in my area, I've never really witnessed the amount of celebration for a new year as I did this particular new year. So, you know, from that, I just felt all this determination and, you know, I don't know, it was just um, a really good feeling I felt from it. So what I've decided to do, I really am not happy with the audio on the phone, which is unusual because normally it's really good, but it's just not working for me, the audio. So I thought what I'll do for the moment until I get my shit together <laughs> is, um, you know, just do an introduction and I've done the charts in podcast as a podcast. So that will be, you know, just after I finish speaking to you here. And um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you as well about a dream I had around about Christmas Eve. Um, so, you know, there's been a few dreams I've had over the last few years that I've wished that I've told you, you know, wished that I had told you at the time. So I had this dream that, um, you know, I was going somewhere. I don't know where I was going. I was out on the road. And as I went to go wherever it was I was going, this guy come up to me and he said, like, I wouldn't go if I was you. And I said, well, why not? And he said, because there's a, a volcano that's about to go off. And I went, well, wow, you know, I live in the UK. There's no volcanoes in the UK. Like, what's the problem? And he said, yeah, look over there. So I'm kind of based in the furthest south of London. I'm actually on the outskirts of London. And um, so the way he was pointed was to the northwest. And, um, you know, when I looked over at the volcano, it was smoking. You know, there wasn't any lava, lava coming out. It was just smoking. And I said to him, well, do you think it's going to hit London? And he said, um, it might hit the parameters of London, the parameters of London, whatever that word is. And, um, but it will depend on which way the lava flows. So when I woke up, I thought, volcano in the northwest of England. You know, I've never heard of a volcano in England. So I researched online and there are loads of volcanoes really in England, especially along Shropshire, which is to the northwest of here. But they've been dormant for like billions of years. So I just wondered what that dream meant, because it was very clear, you know. And then I thought, well, maybe it's talking about an eruption of some kind that's going to happen in the northwest. And um, so I just will watch that space and yeah, I just felt I needed to share that with you all. So um, we're gonna move over to the podcast now. And um, yeah, there's a lot more I need to talk to you all about. You know, we've got quite a lot of shifting of planetary energy going on. We've got Uranus going or Uranus, I should say, going direct at the end of the month from the 29th, um, around about that day. And um, yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting year. So enjoy. And I look forward to speaking to you again at the full moon. So peace. As always, take care. Much love. So we have a super new moon this time round, and um, 
That takes place on the 2nd of the 1st, 2022, at 18.33 in the GMT time zone, at 1.33 in the EDT time zone, and on the 3rd of January 2022, at 5.33 in the AEDT time zone. So, our super new moon will begin at 16 degrees in Sagittarius. And, you know, it's in a little stellium actually, right at an edge of a little stellium. So here in the UK, that's in the sixth house of um, service and health, ruled by the sun in 13 star sign astrology, true lifetime sky. Now we've got Mercury, who's just gone zero degrees into Capricorn at the other end. So Mercury's in shadow at the moment. I mean, Mercury went into shadow, I think it was on the 29th of December at 28 degrees. And, you know, the shadow's always calculated from, you know, when Mercury retrograde ends, he will be at 28 degrees in Sagittarius. So the shadow will begin in direct mode at 28 degrees in Sagittarius, and um, yeah, that occurred on the 29th of December. So at zero degrees, you know, this shadow energy is, wow, it's got our minds turning, especially since, you know, Mercury's on the edge of the stellium, and, you know, Mercury is in conjunction to Pluto at the other end. Um, so we've got the sun and moon at one end, we've got Mercury and Pluto at the other end, and right in the middle is Venus and the goddess Juno. Now both those, um, you know, that asteroid Juno and Venus, the planet, I mean, they're both all about commitment, you know, when it comes to relationships. So I feel this is more relationship orientated this little stellium simply because the goddess Juno and Venus are in conjunction right in the middle of this stellium. So Pluto really is all about loss and um, you know Pluto is direct now um, and he's really moving to the last degrees of Sagittarius. I mean he will enter into Capricorn in the true lifetime sky in, I think it's February, but it's 2023. It's between February and April, but I'm sure it's February. And, um, you know, so at 29 degrees, which adds up to 11, right, Pluto's kind of mastering something. So I feel there's a lot of reminiscing going on because Venus is in retrograde at the moment. And when Venus is in retrograde, it is all about past love or past um, happiness. You know, times we were happy in the past, you know, but with Pluto conjunct Venus, to me, it's all about a sense of loss about the past. So that can be like financial, but it can also be emotional. So maybe there is a lot of reflections going on around relationships. And because this stellium is actually occurring in Sagittarius, I really do feel, you know, there's still this sense of freedom or breaking free from maybe situations that have held us back. Or, like I said, a reflection on situations that maybe we let go of or, you know, was even taken away from us for whatever reason. And there seems to be a lot of reminiscing going on there, which is understandable because, you know, the last two years really have had us in that place of like having to relearn ourselves to a certain point, you know, we've all questioned ourselves, questioned our way of thinking, you know, our intuition, our knowledge. 
you know, it's been a very confusing time. And, um, you know, but if we've been in that place of wholeness and maintain that, then we're still in that balance. We're still kind of going with what we already know, you know. And I feel like a lot of people are kind of breaking out of this shell of feeling restricted because, you know, the sun and moon at 16 degrees, I mean, 16 is a favourable number. It's very spiritual as well, you know, if it adds up to seven. But, you know, it's it's a number of, like, progression, a number of, like, um, a clearer vision, you know, making sense of, like, what we feel and what we know. And um, I feel there's been a lot of intimidation on the normal everyday person, if you like, um, when it comes to like self-knowledge, because there's so many people that are gifted naturally in different areas of life, you know, whether it be science or art, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have been self-taught. You know, either they haven't had the time or the money to put into the educational side of things. But with all the research and the passion that they've put into their studies or into their research, really to gain a better understanding of whatever area it is they've been focusing on, you know, a lot of those people have been kind of intimidated I mean professional people as well but I feel that's changing now I kind of been watching a lot of like medieval kind of programs you know I kind of like those kind of ancient um not ancient I do love ancient stuff but that's more in documentary form and I like to see all different opinions about our ancient history I have a love a deep love of ancient history. But I also just recently got into more like the medieval times, you know, like King Arthur and more kind of mythology or or even, you know, um, our ancestors that were kind of famous from back then, you know. I can't even think of names right now. I've watched so many. But, you know, ranging through all different cultures, like from Scotland, England, the USA, the Middle East, you know, all these different mythologies or these great characters that lived around between the 12th and 14th century. And it's, you know, and then I look at the world around me and I think, wow, the only way we've really kind of changed on the surface of things is that we've become more um, diplomatic. But the way we judge and the way we jump on bandwagons, I don't feel like humanity has really come that far from those times. It's really (laughs) kind of crazy um, to kind of witness that, you know. But then those films have been made in this day and age, so... Maybe that's why that element is there, although some of them are based on true stories. But, um, you know, I just feel that things have happened so quickly over the last few years. There's just been so much that we've had to take on board, so much for us to sift through that, I think we're all hitting that point this year in 2022 of coming back to ourselves, coming back to our own belief systems, back to our own self-knowledge, back to our gifts. You know, there's a strength that's coming out of these last two years in 2022 that it's going to feel like a great release and a relief 
you know, and there are still challenges ahead. But I just feel the universe is preparing us, um, you know, working on our inner strength. And, you know, if you're a Sagittarius, you've been going through it for quite a few years now. You know, this up and down, this backwards and forwards energy. I mean, Sagittarius is known as the optimist. But I feel Sagittarians on the whole, they've been very serious over the last, say, four years. I feel the Sagittarian energy has become very, very serious, whereas normally they're happy-go-lucky. And... um you know, depending on if you've got a moon placement in Sagittarius, I think it would affect you the same way. Or if you've got other strong planets in Sagittarius. So, you know, there are other star signs that have gone through quite a bit as well, you know. Um, but they're kind of like, um, it's been short-lived with those ones, those particular star signs. I feel it's more the Sagittarians that it's been more long-term. And I really feel that's because Pluto has been transiting Sagittarius for a long time. So if you've got a moon in Sagittarius, when Pluto crossed your moon, it was like a complete wipeout emotionally. You know, so it's almost like a renewed energy coming out of 2022. I mean, 2022 numerologically adds up to six, which is the number of humanitarian. And um, there's a lot of controversy around the, the number six, you know, with the triple six energy, but Triple six adds up to 18 and one and eight make nine. That's just an ending of a cycle. And I don't know, humanity on the whole have this inborn fear of endings because of like trauma that our ancestors went through that's just carried on down the line genetically. And even though in true lifetime sky astrology, we are not in Aquarius yet. We are in her aura. We are in her outer layer, which is the crystalline energy. So it's very informational. It's like the antenna. It's very technological. But it's also bringing us into that place of brotherhood, sisterhood, into that place of like, humanitarian values you know because when we hit the seven rays as we transit through the seven rays over the next five to six hundred years you know that it's there's going to be so much change but it's a progression and the seven rays i mean i think the first one is red you know i mean that's high energy so come, you know, this crystalline energy we're in right now is preparing us to go into the age of Aquarius. So the Piscean energy and the Aquarian energy are overlapping right now. And that makes even more sense with Neptune at 23 degrees in Aquarius at the moment in the true lifetime sky. You know, and Neptune has come back into conjunction with the goddess Pallas, who's at 19 degrees in Aquarius. So again, you know, it's helping us to use our magical gifts, our fifth element, the sixth sense. A lot of us have been coming into that intuition in, you know, whatever way we, we tap into that energy. Um, you know, Neptune did move into his own sign of Pisces last year, I think around about April, but he never went further than one degree before he went into retrograde and then transited back to Aquarius last September. 
So, you know, Neptune in Pisces, it's a much more gentle energy because he's comfortable in his own sign, but he can get lost. You know, they say Neptune and Pisces are very nebulous. It's very, it's a bit kind of, um, because it's very deep waters, but very similar to the Ophucan energy. You know, because where it's distortion with Neptune, um, it can also be distortion with Ophucus, because Ophucus' element is ether. Uh, but it has that same kind of distortion. And we have Mars at six degrees in Ophucus right now, at the new moon. So, you know, Mars in Ophucus holds a lot of power but it's a very strong and demanding energy for a focus but it's also very um one to get justice you know to fight for justice and to right the wrongs of injustice and you know mars rules aries and we have Uranus, who is transiting um, Aries, who's also the ruler of Aquarius, still retrograding in Aries. So, you know, there has been this lot of shifting going back when it comes to our ideology, when it comes to, you know, how we progress as um, a global society. You know, we've had to backtrack on what's right and what's wrong, maybe going over, you know, old morals or values or maybe even things that we've done that have been immoral. You know, where we've been impulsive, where we've made impulsive decisions in the past. And... um You know, but Uranus is entwined to our moon and sun, this new moon. So I do feel the reflection is really opening us up. You know, this reflection is really helping us to see things as they are. And, um, you know, Neptune in Aquarius, I mean, it has created a lot of mental health. You know, Aquarius does rule the 13th house of the hidden of the institutions. But, you know, conjunct Pallas. And he's been conjuncting the goddess Pallas quite a bit over this last year or so. And to me, Pallas is very strong and keeps the Neptune energy quite grounded. So, you know, the goddess Pallas has been good at keeping us, you know, focused and keeping our feet on the ground if we have, you know, evolved consciously to a higher level and, you know, not caught up in our emotional energy. I mean, of course, we've all got emotional energy, but it's like how we control that, you know, with the black moon as well. I mean, the black moon Lilith is still in Taurus. She's still transiting Taurus, although I feel she's still hitting um, Aries a little bit here and there, but she will be hitting Gemini. So she'll be backwards and forwards between Taurus and Gemini. Um, So we're coming out of um, that fear of scarcity. We're coming to terms with a lot of that stuck energy of not wanting change, of, you know, fearing what the future holds for us when it comes to our security, you know, when it comes to our foundations, our homes, our families. But, you know, we also have the goddess Vesta at 17 degrees in Ophucus in opposition to the black moon we live in Taurus. 
So I just feel there's, you know, a lot of people still trying to come to terms with their their fears or their their distrust in themselves, you know. Or feeling like, you know, they're never going to get out of the rut that they're in. Whether that be personally or globally. But if we can kind of recognise that as just a feeling. Just a state of mind that we're in. Then we can help ourselves to rise above that. You know to be able to be realistic about our situations but still have the optimism and the faith that all will be well and the optimum and faith that whatever input we're putting in to make this world a better place is justified and we are justified Because, you know, our self-worth or our self-values have taken a bit of a battering. And, um, you know, another thing I wanted to point out with this chart is um, the nodes are in opposition, as they always are. The goddess Ceres is still conjunct the north node, which is good because Ceres, the goddess Ceres conjunct the north node, is helping us to cut away especially at five degrees, cut away all that doesn't serve us. And with the south node at zero degrees in Scorpio, I mean, Scorpio is a very psychic sign. And at zero degrees, we're really getting to the bottom of things. You know, we're digging up the dirt. We're digging up the dirt where really, you know, get into the nitty-gritty of what's beneath the surface when it comes to our health, when it comes to children, our families, the way we self-nurture, the way we nurture others. So we're really coming to terms with that. And, you know, Taurus is all about the self. It's the You know, Taurus represents the inner child in the true lifetime sky. He rules the third house of the inner child. Environmental conditioning. So, you know, the nodes and the goddess Ceres are making a T-square towards Jupiter, who's now at three degrees in Aquarius. And Jupiter at three degrees is fantastic, and especially in Aquarius. Because when Jupiter reaches three degrees, which is his number, that's when he's ready to expand and grow. And as Jupiter is in Aquarius, this is all about our humanitarian values, our spiritual values, coming into our self-power, into our independence as a free thinker you know so while Jupiter was transiting Capricorn he was very very restricted you know he had to deal with all the mundane tasks in life that he doesn't really like to do he'd rather go out there and be free and explore and expand but as he was traveling through Capricorn he was actually being pretty narrow-minded but now he's um, coming to three degrees Aquarius because you know when Jupiter reaches the number three that's when he's ready to expand in any sign so when he first enters a sign at zero one and two degrees he's still kind of stuck in the past signs energy But as he hits the three degree mark, that's when he's ready to really move into that science energy and to take on more knowledge and open up to different ideas or different philosophies, you know, depending on what that sign is. So, you know, we're all feeling this great sense of freedom at the moment. 
and you know things are still challenging but you know it's um 2022 this is a year where we really have to get it together you know because in 2023 saturn will move into aquarius i think yeah saturn will move into aquarius and pluto will move move into capricorn and you know pluto in capricorn is going to be a very serious energy i mean as he's been transiting through sagittarius it's been this kind of like um wiping out of hope of faith of our belief structures of what we already know but in Capricorn it's really all about status and power and Capricorn you know in the true lifetime sky or in any astrology I think Saturn Capricorn rules authority or is connected to authoritarian regimes corporations you know very large organ it's all about structure world structure you know all our solid foundations and capricorn is very kind of um conservative but capricorn is about power it's about status so with pluto entering into that sign that's where the changes really are going to start to take place in the world. You know, but we're only seeing it in bits and pieces right now. And it's still not very clear to a lot of people. But 2023 is going to be major. So in 2022, you know, with Jupiter starting this new moon in this new year with three degrees in Aquarius... And, you know, with 2022 adding up to the numerological number six, this is really a time for soul tribes, communities, like-minded people to come together and to start to prepare for the, you know, the next few years ahead. So, moving on to Mercury Retrograde um, a little bit. I mean, I know I've spoken about Mercury, but when he does go into full retrograde mode on the 14th of January, he will be conjunct Saturn. So, you know, this is good in a way because I feel that, you know, with Saturn at 13 degrees in Capricorn, I just feel this is Saturn in his kind of like more feminine energy you know he's ready to birth something new i feel in the material physical world and with mercury going into full retrograde um i feel there's going to be some really deep thought about past mistakes about gaining a better perspective to amend some past mistakes you know and this also is like realignment you know of the shifts and the changes that have occurred there's going to be a realignment there yeah so for some i actually see like there's this overwhelming worry um you know because we do have the black moon Lilith in Taurus conjunct the moon in Taurus. So we really need to work on overcoming our worries about our possessions and, you know, our insecurities more so, to be honest. And they're both in opposition to Mars in their focus. So, you know, a focus is a beautiful energy. But, you know, when you roll them up until the point where they explode, wow, all hell can break loose, believe me. So that I do feel there's going to be a lot of irritability, a lot of um, 
It's going to feel like a, a time of persecution for some. And I don't know if there's something that's going to occur that's going to bring in this um, Mercury retrograde conjunct Saturn energy where, you know, we have to think about things. We need to re-evaluate mistakes that are becoming clear from the past. Now, I think I've already spoken to you about my dream I had about the volcanic eruption. Well, you know, I feel this is really relative on the 14th. I do feel there's going to be some kind of eruption. Um, but I just get it from more an anger or more from, you know, this very insecure foundation but I do feel there's going to be a lot of healing that comes from this you know we do have Mercury who's in retrograde in sextile to Chiron so it is all about healing so I feel whatever comes up it needs to come up to clear it needs to come up to clear so healing can begin so justice can begin. So, you know, this year is all about turning things around. It's really the tables turning big time. But we need to be in that place of taking up the opportunity. Or the opportunities that are presented to us globally, more so, and personally. And... um you know, Uranus will go direct on the 18th of January, which will be the day after the full moon, which will occur on the 17th. So I'll talk a little bit more about Uranus then. And yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it there for now.